All right. What's up, kiddos? Welcome to the garage. Let me get my headphones set up here. Make sure that we are broadcasting on all channels. There we go. How are you all doing today? We're going to go through some mobility work. We're going to call it broga. We're going to call it yoga, whatever you want to call it. Um, but let's move together, all right? So we're going to keep it... We're going to keep it pretty simple, um, and what I want you to do is get some funky tunes going and make sure that you are dialed in and ready to uh, lengthen out those molecules, lengthen out those cells, I guess. Um, and so, here's what we're going to do. Let's just start swaying back and forth nice and easy. It's the end of the week. Uh, it could be the beginning of the week, whatever, um, but uh, you're probably holding tension in your body from sitting down, from uh, laying down, from playing too many video games, from sitting up, let's get some fake high fives please, from sitting at your desk, maybe you have uh, some low back tension, maybe you got some shoulder rounding, little shoulder protraction, what's up bro, looks really cool in the mirror, but looks silly when you're walking away, um, so we're going we're gonna to fix that, a few reverse windmills please, and, uh, and we're just going to move together, okay, so only push yourself to the range, to the limit that feels good, all right? I don't want you to like uh, kill yourself, all right? So let's get a couple squats, oh, bring it down, stand it up. I want ass to grass, please. Oh, so you can get those hips nice and low and then you're gonna just sway side to side, side to side. All right, our first movement we're gonna start with is called an eighth walk. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get Back in the corner of my little space here. Uh, I'm gonna get a forward fold. And I'm gonna check you with my hamstrings real quick. My right hamstring is tighter than my left because that's just the dominance in my body. Maybe you're opposite, maybe you're not, whatever. Let's roll it up, 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 up. Oh, and then extend, the palms go out, thumbs go out, get nice and tall through the spine. And then we're gonna swan dive right back down. Oh, now, you can go on your fists, face the thumbs forward, or you can go on the palms if you have that range. I'm going to show with the fists because you, it gives you a little more height and you don't have to be able to fold your body. And what we're going to do is we're going to go from opposites, left hand down, right foot, to right hand down, left foot. Switch opposite, switch opposite. And what I'm doing, if you watch my butt up here, my hips, if I'm loading on my right hip, I'm driving this, the spine up and back, and so I'm creating more uh, length and tension in that back hip, in that loaded hip. And I'm stepping, and I'm stepping, and we're just gonna go, you know, go to the end of, end of where you, uh, your end of your range, but if all you have is like a stationary space, then you can just, it's totally fine if you load opposite, Load opposite, load opposite. All right, so just gently, gently, you can go palms down if you want, we'll show that variation also. So I'm switching, it's, it's kind of a downward facing dog, but moving, right? So hips, hips go high, wrapping those shoulders outward, external rotation equals stability. Uh, and we'll just call this kind of a stationary ape if you don't have a lot of space. But you can go backwards with this, you can go forwards with it, Ugh, whatever you want to do. All right, so let's bring it down onto our knees into a kneeling hero's, uh, kneeling hero's pose. And here's what we're going to do. I want you to tuck your feet, tuck your toes underneath, and we're going to just push our feet back so that our knees raise. And we're stretching, it's a very subtle movement. We're stretching the arches of our feet while we raise our knees up. And you can pull your knees up and back with your abs, pull up and back, and then gently set them right back down. The faster you go, the, uh, the more you're cheating. We'll call it that, okay? So speed hides knee, right? I want you to move through these ranges slow, 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 and then come right back down. So we're just stretching the feet for now. Three more times, push back, stretch the feet. Two more times, push back, stretch the feet. 
And you're moving your center of gravity from the knees to the middle of the shins to the balls of the feet. Last time, and we're working up to a bigger movement here called crescent pose. And here's what it's going to look like. Now, if this is not available to you, I'll show you some modifications. But what we're going to do is put your hands back on your he uh, the heels. Yes, put your palms on your heels. And I want you to start pushing those hips forward. And immediately, you can feel the tension in your quads, like just like holding you back. And I bet you're probably surprised at how how tight these are, right? Because we're never in a, in a in a um, localized. So we've got this this um, isolated is a better word to use isolated hip position where the quads cannot hide in their shortest position anymore. Because usually, if you think about it, we're in an opposite orientation with our knees tucked up closer to our belly buttons. But now that our knees are keep pushing those hips away. Keep pushing those hips forward, I should say. Now that our knees are back behind, we've got this extension going on. Our hips are like, what the hell is going on here? We're, we've got a lot of length now. Um, and heck, this is pretty effective, right? So if that's too much for you, I'm going to break it. I want you to keep doing that if that's not too much for you. But if that is too much for you, what I'd like you to do is you're going to just sit. I'm going to keep that, keep that position here. Just sit, and I just want you to lean back. My toes are not tucked. Just lean back and start squeezing your glutes and pushing the hips up. Okay, that's all I need you to do. And if this is enough right here, if you're feeling tension in the knees, just continue on with that. So level one, level two, level three with the hips, level four, which I'm going to return to now. And oh, I guess I'll make a level five too. I'm going to add in the shoulders and the neck. So full anterior spine, anterior of the body rather, is, is, in, is on stretch, right? So I'm externally rotating my shoulders. I'm creating more space in my chest, my biceps, which are always overly tight because biceps are the most important muscle. Um, and my hip, my hips and my quadriceps. Not only, uh, not to mention, this is also firing my glutes up as well. And so when you go to when you go to sit down, guess what? Your glutes go on vacation. Your quadriceps shorten, and um, well, there's all sorts of other bad stuff that happens. But I'll leave it at that. So when you sit, create tension here, vacation here, shorten here. When you go into crescent, the exact opposite happens, right? You lengthen out, you strengthen in the back, and you uh, create more space throughout the thoracic cavity as well. So we're gonna hold this for another ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Gently bring the hips down. Bring the hands in front. If you are if you are seated with your toes untucked, let's tuck the toes this time. We're going to push back into. If you can balance, that's great. If not, just bring your feet a little bit wider. If you got to bring your butt up, that's totally fine. But what I want you to do, if you can, load your heels drive straight up, okay? If that's unavailable to you, if your heels are up, we might want to talk about lengthening out your calves a little bit more um, and creating so that your uh, knees can go forward and your hips can go back, okay? I know it's kind of complex and talking really fast, but I've got a lot to cover. So let's go back to eight. And what I want you to do is, uh, just get kind of your down facing dog, right? You can call this walking dog if you want. It's called eight because it's, uh, it's kind of how apes walk. And you can do the stationary, right? We want opposites, contralateral load. I'm going to move slowly forward and watch my shoulders. My shoulders are not going to tuck up by my ears. They're going to sink down and back away from my ears to create stability. Stability is what we want. And we're shifting our load diagonal, diagonal. And now we're coming back and coming back. Slowly, when you come back, when you move backwards, you're loading those shoulders up and pushing, just like when you're uh, loading your hips up when you're moving forward. So you kind of trade the joints off. Let's go back and forth one more time, side to side. Remember, the slower the better. Speed hides need, my friends. You fly through a specific range and hope that you're uh, hope that you're fooling your body. Well, you're not. Just deep down inside, you know that you need to get better at that range. Another thing this is great for is segmenting, um, uh, having the joints move independently of one another. 
Creating that joint interdependence is important, but independence is also important. All right, so bring it back down to your hero's pose. Boom, just chilling. And we're just gonna open up that anterior again, all right? So if you wanna stay right here, gravy train. If you wanna lean back, start opening the shoulders up, super duper gravy train. If you wanna start adding hip extension in, even better, you do you, okay? Um, I'm gonna go and take it to that next level. Tuck the toes, hands on the heels, start turning those glutes on. Make sure that your heels are about shoulder width apart. Um, so give, give yourself some space to work, right? So glutes tight, 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 tight and start pushing those hips forward. Yes, it looks very suggestive, but yes, it looks very funny, but who's gonna be laughing when they don't have any spinal, shoulder, hip, or knee uh, issues? So do what you gotta do. Open those biceps up, open those biceps up. Ow. We're holding for 10. Breathe, nine, eight, big breaths, seven, six, Squeeze glutes, squeeze hamstrings. Five, four, open those shoulders up, rotate them out. Three, two, one. Ah, gently bring those hips back down, yeah. Awesome, awesome, shake them out. Plant the hands on the ground, push those hips back so the heels come down to the ground. Boom, right there, chest is up, straighten that back, drive into the ground. Okay, so <clears throat> let's add some twists. A twist, not some twists. So what we're going to do, first twist in the day, probably the only twist of the day actually, um, I just want you to take a nice A-frame, right? A-frame uh, position, and what you're gonna do, you've got foot A, foot B, right, foot left foot. You're going to, excuse me, off here, the mangle. You're going to chop at the hips, Hinge those bad boys over, and you don't have to keep a straightened spine once your hamstrings are loaded, okay? The, the most important part about this is keep a straight spine, keep a neutral spine, so hamstrings are loaded, then you can let your body flop over, right? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this, uh, this is called an A-frame hip shift. A-frame hip shift, okay? So once I've got my chop on, I've got my flop on. I'm just kind of letting my spine hang. My knees are locked out. I'm gonna come on over here. I'm gonna check in with my toes. What's up, little guys? How are you? Uh, then we're gonna shift over to the right side. What's up, little guys? How are you? And I'm gonna show you how subtle this, this shift is by turning around, put my big butt up to the camera. We're chopping left side. You can see my left hip is loaded completely, right? I'm just hanging out, blah, 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 maybe place your piano chords or whatever, and I'm going to shift over, that subtle shift from the right, from the left acetabulum to the left acetabulum, acetabulum, I'm saying that wrong, sorry, and now I'm loading all of this hamstring, calf, soleus, bottom of my foot complex, shifting over, okay, so I'm not going to put my butt up to the camera the whole time, I just want you guys to see that, so you keep doing that, please, chop over, sway. Nice and easy, sway. And as you sway, it's called a dynamic stretch. As you sway back and forth, what I want you to think about is getting deeper into that stretch, getting longer into that stretch. What do you feel? What imbalances do you feel? Is one leg tighter than the other? I sure know mine, uh, mine are imbalanced. My right side is so dominant over my left. It is actually something that I have to do corrective work constantly to keep in balance or to keep from falling too far out of balance. So I'm getting deeper and deeper into the stretch every single time. And we've got five more transitions. Shift the hips lightly over. Just let that head hang too. You're in a safe space. No one's gonna attack you. Ugh, so just let the head hang. The, um, that, Characteristic that you, that you utilize to, to always want to be up and looking around. That's in um, the, the limbic brain, the lizard brain, the ancient brain, way back in the back of our head, and it's it is to it is to protect against threats, to protect and detect threats. And it's something in our modern world that we just don't need. 
I mean, you most of us don't need. Um, so the tendency to want to look up all the time and see what's going on is is something that's been inherently ingrained into our lizard brain. I know that's way over five, but whatever, this feels great. Three, two, one, and let's bend those knees, bring them in and down to the ground, and let's take it into a nice child's pose just to reset. Nice wide base, hips go down and back, toes are out forward. I want you to cross, see how I'm looking up again, like I need to see what my hands are doing. I've got five senses, right? Side is one of them. If I take that away, I've still got four more. So while smell is probably not going to do, do it too much, we've got we've got our sense of sound, our hearing, and we've got our tactile senses that will do very very well here. So head is going to be down, nice neutral spine, and you're going to grip forward to create a bit of tension, and then I just want you to sway side to side, gently sway side to side. Ugh. We're going to call this swaying child's pose. If it's not a thing, it is now. You heard it here first. And as you sway, I'm swaying to the left, and I'm pushing my left hip, right hip down to create length and um, stretching the adductors. As I sway to the right, I'm pushing my left hip down. Sway for 10, 9, 8. Yes, this looks also pretty suggestive also, but uh, do it, and you'll be laughing all the way to the bank when your body feels amazing and everybody else starts to, starts to break down. Trust me. Trust me on that. Five, four, three, two, one. Ah, oh, very nice job. Okay, so let's do one more hip shift, one more uh, swaying child's pose, and then we're gonna put them all together and we'll run through it one more time. So come on up, hippie shiftiness. I'm gonna show you from this kind of diagonal. Hopefully that works. If not, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so, we take a nice tall spot, uh, however you want to get into that position, chop those hips. They're going to go back like this, then you're going to, as you've, uh, you've bent over, your spine's nice and taut, then you can bring it down, right? Okay, so, I haven't said anything about where the feet are pointing, you point your feet wherever you want to point them. If they're going to be out in front, totally cool. If they're going to be out to the side at like 20 degrees or so, that's fine too. I like right in front, 12 o'clock, because that's going to present most of the hamstring. Go ahead and start swaying. Most of the hamstring in the back, adductor magnus, um, uh, semitendinosus, semimembranosus, um, present it to that stretch. You mean. Oh, and we're swaying back. Ten. See how uh, you can probably get you can probably feel there's a little bit difference between now and the first set that we did. Eight to go. Push those hips over. Seven. Walk in the hands. Six. If you can't get down this slow, you can take books or yoga blocks or small children, whatever you have available to you to walk back and forth. I've lost count, but I'm just going to call it four more. Bring it across. Uh, three more. Uh, walk it across. Two more. Walk it across. One more time. Uh, that is just wonderful. All right, let's bring it down. And now this is a double assault on the hips, right? We just got glute complex, hamstrings. Now we're going to go to the adductors, hips, and spine. All right, so get into that child's pose. Start your sways. Ugh. You might be able to make them a little bit more grandiose than last time. You do you, okay? Sway to the right for 10. Sway to the left for 10. Sway to the right. Sway to the left. Sway to the right. Sway to the left. Right. Ten, nine. I think I already started counting. Eight. We're just going to keep going. That's cool thing about stretching. You can never really do too much of it. Seven. Push those shoulders down. Six. Five. You might feel this up in your lats and your triceps with the muscle on the side. Four. Three. Two. One more time. Yeah. 
Beautiful. Okay. If you got coffee, if you got water, go ahead and grab a little bit. Um, what I need from you is one more round. Okay, we're just gonna run through that one more time. You should be feeling pretty good at this point. Not like creaky and like, ugh, I'm not made of wood or iron or whatever element you wanna be made of. Um, but the point is to increase circulation to the body, increase circulation to the brain, and help you move and feel better. Because if you feel better, you can focus on why you're here, right? Work, play, productivity, making the world a better place, right? Nobody can they, nobody can live up to the true potential of this distracting of injury. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stand at the corner of, my, of, of our mats or our whatever you have, right? You can do the ape stationary if you'd like. But ugh, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk because I've got the space. And remember, this is diagonals. Diagonals. You can just stay in place and do this if you want. But I'm gonna walk and I'm making this a little bit exaggerated so you can see what's going on so you can see where the load in my hips is. Hips are loaded on the way forward because I'm propelling myself with my calves, with my ankles and hips, I'm sorry, shoulders are loaded on the way back. And all you're going to do, push with the shoulders. This is where my stability is coming from. I'm going to switch that over. This is where my stability is coming from. Right across the body. Push back. Push back, push it back, push it back. There we go. Good stuff. Uno mas, por favor. Uh, switch, switch, uh, switch. Moving diagonal. Once uh, you have this and you're doing it well, Start focusing on those tissues. Get a little bit deeper into the tissues. Don't let your mind wander too, too far off because then you'll just be going through the motion. All right. So, apes are done. You want to do them as many times as you want. That's fine. The more the better. Let's go to our crescent. So, I'm going to show the phases. If you want to go ahead and get into gear, that's fine. But, here's your phase one, right? This is just, I'm hanging out on my hips. This might be enough for the uh, quads and the, um, the tops of the feet and the anterior tibialis, that's the shin muscle on the outsides of your shin bone. Phase two, just leaning back a little bit. That might be enough. Phase three, I'm starting to school, engage my glutes and I'm pushing my hips up and forward. That might be enough for you. Phase four, level four, phase four, whatever, tier four. Hands back, you're tucking your toes, right? Hands back on the heels of your heels of the hands on the heels of the feet. That's why I was having uh, some confusion there. And I want you to then we're going to start to squeeze and push, push, push. And phase five is uh, at the shoulders, the chest, the biceps. Open up the muscles of the neck. Just let them. I can't relax when I'm talking so much, but I want you to let them just extend out. Those are called the scalenes and the sternocleidomastoid, and they are big muscles that hold a lot of tension. So just breathe. <sighs> Stick your belly out like me. <sighs> Don't do chest breathing. Chest breathing does nothing for anybody. Big belly breaths. <sighs> 10. <sighs> 9. <sighs> 8. <sighs> 7. Get into that stretch. Make your body do what you want it to do. Six. Five. Four. Open those biceps up. Three. It's amazing how long it takes muscles to unfunk themselves, right? They're stubborn. Two more. One more. Yeah, very, very, very nice. Gently bring yourself back down to earth. Oh, ha, 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 ha. And let's set up for our A-frame hip shift, okay? So, boom, bring it up. Feet out to the side. <coughs> chop from the hips, chop, chop, chop. Oh, what's up? So we just, did, we just had a lot of spinal flexion. Go ahead and start swinging side to side, and now, I'm sorry, spinal extension, and now we're going into spinal flexion. Oh, 
Get deep and grip into the ground with those toes when you're doing this. Shift over to the side, my friends. Shift over to the side, my friends. Mm -hmm. Nice and easy. I'm going to add a little knee to nose, nose to knees. Get a little bit deeper into that stretch. That's just what I'm feeling, what I need to do. Eight more. Sway it over nice and easy. Seven more. Nice and easy. Six more. Nice and easy. Oh, five more. Nice and easy. Four more. Three. Two. One more time. Ah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Break down to the earth. Let's get that child's pose. Hips wider than, I'm sorry, knees wider than the hips. About shoulder width, maybe a little more. Extend those fingers forward. Find yourself wrapping your elbows around so you can create a little bit of tension under the arms and then we're just gonna sway back and forth. Open up that rib cage. Open up that spinal column. Sway. Sway and relax. Sway and relax. Yep. Ten. Nine. Eight. Don't forget to breathe, my people. Seven. Six. Palms down. Fingers dig in. Gently. Not too much aggression needed with this movement. Or any movement today, for that matter. Yesterday's, yeah, lots of aggression. But today, today's the trough that follows the crest. There will be another crest, there will be another trough, such as life. Two more. One more. Ah. Beautiful. All right. And here's where I'd like to wrap class up. Find yourself a nice seated position. I prefer a kneeling position. If you want to do a, a crisscross applesauce, whatever, um, that's fine. It's just easier for me to uh, keep my spine upright um, in this position. So palms up, palms down, whatever you want to do. And we're just going to take 10 deep, intentional breaths. Find yourself an intention. Maybe it's just, maybe it's, don't have a short temper with the traffic light. Maybe it's hug your kids. Maybe it's don't drink a full 12 pack to yourself. Uh, whatever it is, focus on that. Just kind of find it right here, a little bit in here too, and just breathe with me for 10. Here we go. Close those eyes if you'd like. Inhale. Tension in your body, just let it fall away. Don't let the day creep in just yet. If it does, just acknowledge it and let that thought pass on through. Four more breaths. Excellent. All right, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me in the Body Garage Mobility Sessions this morning. I hope you go have an amazing day. 
change the world for the better because it's much easier to change it for the worse. And I will see you next time in the garage. Peace.